that, or you can show her around a little. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Live in the Classroom. I'm Erica Fernandez with CCIC Communications, and today we're live at Seabrook Intermediate School inside the Living Materials Center. And it's a little bit different today, but we're excited for today's Facebook Live. We have Miss Andy Smith, and she is the manager here at the LMC. Miss Smith, tell us a little bit about this classroom. So, um, this, I like to call this a living library. Okay. Um, so, in addition to having volunteers like you see around this, this afternoon, we check animals out to classrooms. Um, in fact, when you see spaces around here, those animals are out in classrooms right now in libraries. We go out to classrooms in person and via Teams and do critter chats with students. And then we have an amazing volunteer program of students from all over the district during the summer and from here at Seabrook Intermediate School during the school year. And what kind of animals can we expect to see inside the LMC? So we have, we have small mammals, okay. so ones that you might expect, uh, rabbits, guinea pigs, chinchillas, hedgehogs, ferrets, and then some more unusual ones like dagoos and short-tailed opossums. Okay. We have five snakes, all non-venomous. <laughs> uh, we have lizards, frogs, turtles, tortoises, birds, and we even have some creepy crawly insects yeah some, sometimes <laughs> some people not a huge fan right not, but, not a lot some are. Um, so you were saying that the teachers can borrow them for a few days and bring them back how do the teachers go about getting those animals inside their room so in fact that's starting today um, we have a teacher training this afternoon it's a six-hour training where they meet all the animals learn how to handle them what's expected to take care of them while the animals are in the classroom and then how to incorporate it into their curriculum yeah. and to enhance their, the experience of students in their classes. And so these students today, it's a new batch of volunteers. How do students yes. become volunteers in the LMC? So students here at Seabrook, they um, signed up, they attended a, a meeting last week just to get the general overview and then they pick a day. And um, so we have some veteran volunteers today, some seventh graders who are teaching our new sixth graders the ropes. So what kinds of things will they be doing when they're in here? So they make sure that the animals have food and water. So the food can range anywhere from hay to pellets to crickets, mealworms, even some small roaches. We have earthworms that we feed some of the animals. They change bedding. They do just general overhaul all health checks to make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then once everything's done, they get some quality time with animals. All right. Well, I know you have some training to do with these new volunteers, so we'll let you get to it. Awesome. Thank you. Marco, so make sure your animal is contained and come on over. There's just a few reminders that I want to give you. It was hard not to bring, do you want to bring the rat over with you? Yes. All right, <laughs> just, you can just keep her, there we go. So that's Micah the rat. So, um, so those of you who are our rookies, you got a little bit of an overview of what's happening here. Did everyone learn to where to wash your hands? Yep. And, did, and you washed your hands? And you found a supply bin with all the supplies you might need? Excellent. So I do want to point out, for especially for our returning volunteers, but also our new volunteers as well, when you see empty spaces, they usually have a little tag on them. Those are our animal friends that are out in classrooms right now. So I know many of you, when you were in elementary, had LMC animals come and visit you. Uh, anyone remember someone that came who came to see you? Oh, well, I did have Bruce. Bruce the bunny. Yes, we all love Bruce. I had a chinchilla. One of the chinchillas came. Um, when I was in fifth grade, I think Zola came. Zola the hedgehog came to fifth grade. A carrot. Carrot the ferret. I bet that was a crazy mess, huh? Yeah. So super fun. What did Eric have you had? Um, I've had a bearded dragon. I didn't. I kind of forgot the name. All right. It was probably either Ronan. Ronan's kind of new, so it may be Blaze. Yeah, probably Blaze. All right. So that's, that's where those spaces are. Those animals will come back either Thursday afternoon or Friday morning after spending a week at the classes. So today your job is to follow the instructions on your card. Yes. Um, I, but my library had, like, uh, like the hissing roaches. And oh, I bet you were at Falcon Pass, weren't you? Yeah. Yes, Falcon Pass last year had a hissing booth for Valentine's Day instead of a kissing booth, and they had the hissing cockroaches, which I love that. All right, so today you're completing your job for your animal. When you're finished, please ask myself or Miss S if we can, just to check your work, see if there's anything that can make it better. We'll put this away, and then if there's time, maybe you'll do a second animal. Um, maybe you'll help someone finish up. I'm going to give this back to you so I don't forget. Uh, and then uh, before maybe around 10 till, or 5 till 4, we'll do some animal time.
Everybody ready? Yes. All right, if you have any questions, read your card and then ask. Ask your veteran, ask myself <coughs> or Miss S. And have an amazing time. All right, back to work. Um, the birds, they're almost out of food. Do you want me to give them more food or do you want me to just send them down and give them fresh food? Oh, uh, are you talking about Fromishka? Yes. Can you bring me her food dish? Y'all need go, food. Go outside to the box turtles, right? Box turtles are in this gray bin. They may be, oh, we only have one right now. The other one's checked out. So look under the little brown hideouts. Let's take a look. All right. You know what I would love for you to do here? Let's, you could add some, but could you take a wet cloth and just try not to get it wet there, but just Bird freshen up. And her food is a little bit different. It's in this black bag right here. How much should I give her? Um, probably about one scoop. One scoop? One scoop. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, and which one are you guys working on? Victor. Victor. All right, I saw you were already getting his water set, right? I will tell you that this green dish was his enrichment, so he's already had his fresh food enrichment today because he was like, I'm starving. Um, so you can move that around as you need to, and then maybe um, just... So he isn't getting a new one? He's not getting a new one, even though he may try to talk you into it. <laughs> if you want, you can put your supply bin on that table or on that chair. Perfect. All right. How are we doing with Ronan? All right. Is he already in his thing? Okay. Good job. Did you hold him? No. Maybe when he moves back, you can hold him. I will tell you that this is his fresh food from today. You can leave it in here, but you might need to. Excellent. Awesome. All right, awesome. Yes, definitely. You guys locked, lucked out today because yesterday this place was a mess. So you, you got lucky for your first day. Maybe that you'll see you'll come back because of that. All right, so Team Turtle, I'm going to get you, while you're working on box turtles, I'm going to get your map turtle food ready, okay? Team Rat, how are y'all doing? Oh, it's very good. She did try to hide a Oh, that's her favorite thing to do. Well, it's not about that, but another way that the word fancy can be used from a long time ago is when you like something, you fancy it. Oh, my grandma did this, It Yes. Yes, that is a very British word. You're right. Yeah, so that's how, because map turtles, it's a mix that we make from a, well, kind of like jello, but with other delicious things in it. Have you pause, um, Victor's group? I think you are good. You don't necessarily need to cover him back up, but we're going to take a little break. Is Micah contained? Yes. All right, excellent. If y'all will close Ronan's door, please. I, especially for our newer friends, I did want to introduce you to the ferrets. And we've got Benji here, but also, so y'all can come over here. We'll just take a little break from her work. And I'm going to wake up our sleeping friend. Carrot. Carrot. Look, everybody knows Carrot, huh? Hi, Benji. We'll get you too. Yes, here. Can someone, how about? All right. He's not particularly, uh, so give him some good love there. All right. So ferrets. Um, we have black-footed ferrets in North America. They don't really, so these guys are not really related to them. Um, 
So they are, they have fur, so they are mammals. mammals. Good job. Um, some of you may know about the ferret smidgen relationship. We don't have to go into the details, but oh. right. So ferrets are predators, predators yeah. right? And this long nose tells us that they use their sense of smell to do most of their hunting. They hunt underground most of the time. Bless you. Um, so they, they hunt animals that burrow. So like um, rabbits, yes, yeah, so like because mama rabbits will sometimes put baby rabbits in little burrows. Um, some, some birds do burrow, yep. Um, but they're going to usually eat other smaller mammals. So moles, voles, rats, um, prairie dogs, which a prairie dog is about the size of Victor. So it's kind of crazy to think about an animal this size eating that. But so some things that you can know that make a mammal a predator, um, their eyes. So which way are carrots' eyes looking? Forward. Forward. forward, right? So predator mammals have eyes that look forward. Um, and so that's going to, and notice that, like, if we look at a bunny or a guinea pig, or you think about a deer, where are their eyes? Yeah. On the side of their head. And that's because they're always looking around, the looking around and making sure that no one's coming, right? Um, and so that's one thing. And so also, if we were to see her teeth, she's got canine teeth uh, for grabbing the prey. So those are some things that we can look at for ferrets to know that they are predators. Why is all Benji's fur gone? Why is, Benji has adrenal disease, and one of the side effects of adrenal disease is that they lose fur, but he's recently gotten a treatment, and hopefully in about six weeks, so maybe around getting close to Halloween, we'll see. He'll look like it, he'll have a costume of fur, um, and so we'll see that. Yep. So why do, why do mammals need fur? To keep warm, because that fur holds in. What do, when you touch him, what do you notice? Is he shivering? But does he feel warm when you touch him? Because his heat is kind of leaving his body, so that's a little bit of the shivering. So he's got lots of things here in his enclosure to keep warm. Any questions about ferrets? All right, did everybody get a chance? I know I saw some hands come in. So they're not quite as soft as like a chinchilla, but but they're super cute. And they act like toddlers, right? They do. You know, the word ferret, besides being the name for this animal, it has another meaning to hide things away. Um, and, and the word ferret, oh, well, hello. Thank you for catching that. Um, the, um, the name ferret means little thief because these guys tend to hide things away. So especially if you, I know our newer friends haven't met our new ferrets, but they're um, in Mr. Sims' biology class today. Really? Yes, um, but they love to hide things away. Yes, so shall we hide you away so we can get back to work? All right, so everyone can say, see you later, Carrot. See you later, Carrot. And then those of you who are veterans that remember the story of how Carrot came to live with us, you can tell your, your rookies that story. I never heard of that. You haven't heard it, so we'll make sure that you find out. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess Tuesday afternoons need to learn about how she came to us. I'll tell you that story next. All right. Okay, y'all ready to get back to work? Yep. All right, thank you so much for... I love you, Carrie. Oh, well, goodness, I think I need to tell everybody the story. Y'all want to listen to the story while you work? Yes, please. All right, so three Christmases ago, I was driving into my neighborhood, and an animal runs in front of my car. And it was Carrot. So not an animal we typically see in this area out in the wild. So she had either escaped or been released. And uh, I think she knew that if she ran in front of my car, she would get to come here. So that's how we found Ferret. Miss Smith? Carrot. Yes. This was the first or the second? The highest one, okay, please. Is there supposed to be another thing here? Or there's nothing there. Um, can you turn it around, however? There you go. Yeah, the other side's the handle. So I can turn some streets. I saw some streets down below. Do I get the streets as well? Yes, the little seed balls. Yes. All right, that wraps up our time here at the Living Materials Center at Seabrook Intermediate School. We'll see you guys next time.